welcome. Discovery Channel Shark Week kicked off with boxing legend, my man Mike Tyson, taking on Jaws. And joining us now is the baddest man on the planet himself, Iron Mike. How you doing, Mike? So much I want to talk to you about, but you are kicking off uh, a Shark Week. What, what inspired this? Is it true that your wife tried to talk you out of it? She didn't want you to do it? No, my wife talked me in doing this. Oh, she talked you into um, it. <laughs> I didn't want to do this stuff. So I'm, <laughs> this gig and I'm doing this um, shark thing, and I, I can't imagine my wife wanting me to do this stuff. So listen, the reason why I got the gig because I, I'm doing this exhibition, you know, my Legends Only League. Yes. And so that, um, Dana White was really panicking. He got nervous. And he said, Mike, I don't want you to do this stuff. I got some gigs for you you're going to love. And I said, well, thanks. And he got me Shark Week. So I'm, talk I'm talking to my wife. I said, well, tell Dana thanks for being my friend. He doesn't want me to fight Roy, but he wants me to fight a shark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friends like Dana who needs enemies. Exactly. No, and I don't do the same thing. So, Mike, how much time have you actually spent in the water before or in the ocean? Were you, because you're from Brooklyn, so I can't imagine. I'm not much of an ocean guy. I went to Spain and I did a little scuba dive and I was like, what, a foot underwater? It wasn't complicated, but this was another dimension of fear that I never experienced in my life. This this is next level. I mean, you traveled to the Bahamas. You went inside a cage uh, deep in the ocean. You went free diving with these sharks. I mean, man, the adrenaline had to get going. At one point, were you like, nah, I, I'm, I'm, I didn't sign up for this? It was too late. <laughs> it's too late once you're there, right? Once you the Bahamas, it was too late. I already signed the agreement. It was too late. And how was it once you did it? How'd you feel? Hey, it was, it was never cool. It was always, um, it was, it was always out of control. I was never in control. My lungs were heavy. Yeah. It was tough breathing down there. Yeah. But um, to actually get involved with the sharks and they weren't as scary as I thought it would be. And um, I got pretty much um, at home down there. You're, you're right about the breathing, though, because it is difficult when you're down there, and especially if you're not used to it, you feel a little claustrophobic and stuff. But they it felt heavy. My lungs felt tired. Yeah. Breathing was like lifting weights. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. And they got such a cool lineup yourself. They also got a, a Shaq, a Will Smith, I think, is part of the Shark Week. Did you have any sort of interaction or talk to those guys uh, about this at all? No, but... Um, Knowing these guys, they're very adventurous. I'm not adventurous like them. <laughs> I don't want to jump out of planes. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to scuba dive. I don't want to do this stuff. I don't want to interact with wild, crazy animals. I don't want to go on for safaris and all that stuff. I, yeah. I'm just not that kind of guy. Well, I give you major props, man, because it takes a lot of courage to get uh, in that cage, just as it does to get back in the ring at 54 years old. I was so personally uh, excited to hear this, and when I saw that little clip of you when you were just hitting the mitt and you were still bobbing and weaving, hitting that, and still looking explosive, I was like, "Woo!" My man still got it. But then when I heard that you're gonna actually go in there and fight, how did that come about, Mike? And what what prompted that? You really want to hear this? Yes. All right, listen, I'm in the car with my wife. And all of a sudden, her brother comes up and says, Mike, I, I know you're not going to do this, but the guy told me to ask you. I told him I asked you. I know you're not going to. This guy wants to know if you want to fight this guy for 20 or 30, something like that. And I said, now listen, man, I don't want to fight nobody. You can't see I'm an old mother. And I said, hold on one minute. Who do they want me to fight? And so they said, Bob Sapp. I said, all right, I know Bob. I said, how do they want me to fight him? Do they want me to fight in the night or do they want me to fight him like Marcus the Queensberry, you know, boxing? Right. Three minutes on, one minute off. And then he said, one minute. He came back and said, I'll fight him boxing. And I don't know, must have my ego sometimes I said, I'll do it. That's awesome. And Just like that, that's awesome. And then how did it turn in from Bob Sapp to Roy Jones? Went from Bob Sapp, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, and they, I'm just as lost as you're not for a joke. I'm fighting Roy now September 12th. Uh, yes, this is happening. September 12th. I cannot believe, I believe it's been about 15 years, right? Since, yeah. since the last, so have you and Roy spoke at all prior to this? We signed the contract, yes. Okay, and what's his, what's his feeling and what's his, because Roy, Roy, I fought not too long ago. He stayed pretty active too, right? It's true, it's true. And have you started sparring yet, Mike? Um, 
I sparred a couple of rounds, but the real sparring is starting to happen um, this week. Yeah. And it's real sparring. It, and I gotta imagine now that you're uh, you're in your fifties, you have to approach it differently. Obviously, you did when uh, when you were younger, so it's almost like a less is more sort of mentality, right? You don't want to leave it all in the gym. You want to be able to kind of peak at the time when you're going to have the fight. Correct? Is the approach different? That's interesting. I guess um, I try to keep the same intensity that I have now and the same determination now that I'm going to have when I get in the ring on September 12th. It's all about my motivation, my determination, and my will to really have a good show. That's awesome. You look great. And I, I, how you feeling? How you feeling now that you're in there? I feel really good. Now I got to get, as you know, in boxing condition. Exactly. That's a whole nother kind of condition. I cannot believe. A whole nother animal. Yeah, a whole nother animal. People think they're in shape until they step in the ring. It's a whole nother thing. You can run a marathon, then try getting in the ring. You say, hey, I want to run a marathon. All I day. Do this. All day. <laughs> and then you have someone coming at you. You know how it is. <laughs> I'm trying to kiss you either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love this. You got a great shirt on. I love this um, uh, Legends Only League that you're, you're launching. Mike, for those not familiar, uh, talk to us about it. Yeah, um, I was watching this um, show that had Jerry Rice, and I think it was doing... Um, I don't know, but we just they were, they were doing a retrospect on Jerry Rice and and they were talking about him and he and for some reason he was like I think five seconds or a tenth of slower and for that he cannot entertain people no more. He has to stop. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, there's more people that want to see him run with the ball than they want to see the person that's playing his position right now. Right. And go 49 with the ball. And he probably has more um, Twitter followers than the guy playing his position right now in San Francisco. So why, when, why, why do we have to stop him for having his glory years and stop playing just because he's a few seconds too slow? I love that. And as a guy, I, as a guy who's about to turn 47, man, it's so inspiring because, you know, I just don't want to stop. So I'm all about this. So congratulations on that. And listen, Mike, stay right there because Jamie Foxx is getting ready to play you in a movie about your life. Have you have you given him any sort of uh, advice about playing you in this film, or discussed it at all with him at length? No, hey, listen, um, he he's the best at what he does. He's been around me. He know me for a long period of time. And if he has to pick up any kind of habits or peculiarities, he has come around. That's awesome. And and he's training hard already for the role. He wants to gain thirty pounds. He's looking pretty jacked. It's just cool that. Uh, um, getting all this love and showing the support all these years later, man. I wanted to tell your story, and and uh, I'm here for all that. Um, uh, quickly, it, it, your your relationship with Serena Williams. You guys friends, and is it true you helped train her to get in certain shape? Uh, what's the story with that? My daughter's a an up and coming tennis player, aspiring tennis player. She's um, she's madly in love with um, Serena and all the other tennis players there, uh -huh. and. Um, it's really influenced her a great deal. And by doing that, I wanted to become a part of her life by it being involved. And by being involved, um, um, Serena and her, um, and her coaches, they took a liking to her. And she uh, periodically is invited to their competition. And that's how the relationship um, excavated. That's cool, man. So cultivated, yeah. Yeah, what a cool dad right there. And and as far as like during this quarantine, what what have you been watching on TV, Mike? You catching up on any good uh, good shows or binging anything? Listen, I'm watching old movies. I'm watching, you know, I'm watching a reality show, 90 Day Fiance, Love and Hip Hop, and what is another new one? Um, you know, some guy from Huntsville, Alabama. It's just so all this stuff I can't help. I got to watch because I'm with my wife here. And sure. I'm here with her. We're watching this crazy stuff. Did, did you watch the Tiger King? Because I saw you post something. I follow you on social media because you were the original Tiger King when you had one in, uh, in your yard, I remember. Oh, yeah. Tiger King was very entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was entertaining, man. Hey, well, listen, champ, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with me. I cannot wait to uh, uh, support you right there for the fight. Hopefully, I'll see you um, when you're sparring, because I'm, 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 I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. After two weeks, I'll let you come after two weeks. 
Okay, sounds it's good. It's going to be real painful at first. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, champ. It's not going to be a pretty picture. Sounds good. Thank you so much. A big thank you to the champ. And listen, if you missed Tyson versus Jaws Rumble on the Reef, check it out on Discovery Go. And Tyson is back in the ring with Roy Jones Jr. on September 12th. You can see it on pay-per-view or Triller.